All right, welcome back. Let's continue drawing our drawing. So, this is the old way. So, in the old way, the graph would place an event inside its queue, and then it would let the application know, right, the user interface thread, it would put a notification into, excuse me, the Windows messages queue of the user interface thread, the thread would realize it, because the thread is normally waiting on this queue, the, the thread is throughout all this time waiting on the queue, that's the way I notice notify waiting this is it's waiting it's blocking it's blocking on on the queue when the queue has something in it so it becomes signaled when it is signaled the gate opens and the thread goes and picks up the information the, the message from the queue and deals with it all right, that's this is normal mech uh, a, a standard mechanism consumer producer from normal uh, multi-threaded programming. So that's what's implemented in Windows. Let's save this diagram. This is the D show thread. All right. Okay. So Okay, so that's so in our case, it's going to pick up the info, the message in the queue, and this message tells the application go to the go to the graph and extract the events from the from the queue of the graph. Fantastic! But this again, this has this architecture involves the user interface thread in non-user interface activities. Not good. I don't think it's good. All right, that's one way. The other way, another way of doing things, is similar, similar, so let's copy this, control C, V, alright, this is a different way. Another way is not to involve the user interface thread at all. So, so, uh, so the user interface thread is not involved. We'll leave it alone. We'll leave it alone. We'll. Uh, I, I need to split over here, right? And this is. This can go over here, maybe like this, like this. And now I'm going to create a second thread. So we're going to create a second thread, and this one is not going to be a user interface thread, but rather a thread dedicated to managing direct show, the graph. So this is a, I would say, graph dedicated, a thread dedicated to the graph. So it's a graph dedicated thread. It's not dedicated by the graph, it's dedicated to the graph. Right. And in this method, there's not going to be communication this way, right? Which is the way it is for this thing. Let's use this, right? Over here, that's good. But in our case, that's not a good solution. We don't like it. Wrong. But rather, this is going to be our solution. Alright, so what's the solution? So the solution is that there is an event object over here. That we, that in the left hand side solution we don't involve the event the windows event object windows event object we do not uh, uh, enjoy we don't enjoy using it in the left hand side solution this is the windows event and the win uh, and the, the way the graph works is when it places something into the event queue it signals the event 
let's have uh, green light it signals the event which I could have also said over here this also became signaled it's a different event it's, uh, this is the, the Windows messages queue and this is the um, and here we're talking about the events, the graph events queue. Alright, so the Windows event is signaled by the graph. Very good. And the thread could be made to wait on, let's use this bluish, could be made to wait on this, on this event. It's going to wait on it. the thread, we can have it wait on this event object. So that when the event object is signaled, this dedicated thread will wake up. Right? So what do we have? So we have a secondary... This is one approach. Right? Basically, there's two approaches. One approach is not multi-threaded, and the right-hand side is multi-threaded. But the right-hand side, which is multi-threaded, this is not multi-threaded. This is not multi-threaded. Multi Let's control A and write in black. And this is, yes, multi-threaded. Multi-threaded. So the multi so so the multi-threaded solution, this is only one solution within one sub-solution within the multi-threaded general solution. Notice that the not multi-threaded solution it's not really true because there are threads running inside the graph, as we pointed out before. And alright. And also on the left hand side, the not multi-threaded solution, this is only one sub-solution to the not multi-threaded solution. And this is, on the right hand side, this is one sub-solution of the multi-threaded solution. Right? There are other ways to have multi-threaded solutions. But this is, I, I would say, one of the more simplistic, more simplistic, not as efficient uh, as other uh, so sub-solutions could be. In any case, in the right-hand side solution, in the multi-threaded solution, the original user interface thread is not occupied in non-user interface activities. Fantastic. We have a separate thread for that. All right. So what I'd like now to do is to modify our application as to make it multi-threaded so that we can have the dedicated thread wait on this event. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. You could say, we, once we switch to this solution, so we don't really need, once we switch to the other thread solution, to the separate thread solution, so who needs get event, you can just invoke wait for completion. That's true, wait for completion, that's if you are only waiting for completion. But sometimes you're not waiting for completion, but rather you're waiting for other information. Right? Sometimes you don't always play from a file. Sometimes you play from the internet, or sometimes you record. And Anyway, sometimes you really have to deal with the quantums, with the pieces that make up the file and make up the stream. So you cannot really, I'll just wait for completion, I'll sit, I'll go to sleep, and no. Usually, you cannot. Usually you have, you, you, you're interested in more messages than just completion. So, but in, in terms of the fact that we were looking for a solution that will not block the user interface, you could say that wait for completion is good enough. We could do that as well. Alright, so what I'd like to do now is somehow create a separate thread, right? Which we want to have our, when we click on play, we want to create a separate thread. Again, this is a sub-sub solution, one of many. It's not a good idea, I don't think it's a good idea to create, really create a new thread when you start playing. Maybe you should have a dedicated thread that's created 
um, once in the once in the lifetime of the entire application. All right. So let's get started doing that. So, right. So again, what are we going to do? So when the user clicks on play, we're going to create a separate thread and have the the separate thread play. And and then at the end of play, it really should should wait. Basically. Basically. All right. So let's do that. Okay. So back to our our application. You know, just before we modify it, let me just make a backup because I really have not backed up anything, and I keep modifying, modifying. So this media player, let's just make a, a copy of it. So we have a copy, that's my backup. All right, now back here. So what we would like to do is, I guess, is when we hit play, we should really, really this should be begin play, right? When I start working with threads, I start using terminology such as begin instead of play that says well right now you can call it begin play as well because it starts playing and then right so it's a good it's a good modification in any case so this is going to be begin play and it's only going to create a thread it's not going to actually play instead we're going to have a thread callback routine. For now, I'm going to define just, I don't remember how the callback is done. So this is just going to be the play CB over here. That's actually going to do the playing. And begin play is going to just create a thread and return right away. So create thread. So null stack size, I think you say zero. Thread routine, that's going to be our play CB. Parameter, I don't think we have a parameter. Well, we need to pass it the HWND. And creation flags uh, zero. And thread ID, I think you can pass in null. And this returns actually a handle, a handle, and we're almost out of time. This is the H of the thread. This is the H thread. So we, we create a thread. I don't remember if this is actually going to cause the thread to run. All right, so F6, let's see if this compiles. F8, HWND, they don't know what we're talking about. So this, so the question is, what does the callback look like? So F12, let's see what the callback should look like. This is F12, mosquito. All right, so this is what the routine should look like. It should, it should return a D word and receive an LP void. All right, so let's go back here, and we're out of time. Okay. All right, so we know what the callback should look like. This is what it should look like. So it should receive this parameter. So there you go. And it should return a double word. All right, and we should um, F6. I think we should declare it just before, but we really should finish for today. Mm, yeah, we're out of time. We'll continue this in the next lecture and hopefully finish up. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you in the next lecture.